I hate New Yorkers. I think they all suck. And they're a bunch of sons of bitches. Dad, what's cracking? How you doing? Somebody's ass as soon as I get out of here. Damn, boy. I'm probably a sex over a thousand times in my lifestyle. And really, have I met you? You're very ignorant. You're the most oh, I'm ignorant. Yes. yes. I know. And you're Albert Einstein. I know. How much does it cost to fill up your SUV? Oh, 85 bucks. I don't know how much longer I can do this. And I just laughed my ass off at you people. I really, really did. And while you're at it, pick up another $5 cup of coffee at Starbucks, will you, folks? Put that in the cup holder of your SUV and uh, shove it up your ass. <laughs> I'm actually upgrading to a uh, a moped. You don't you don't want to you know about fat chicks and mopeds. They're fun to ride, but you never want to catch your friend riding on one. Well, you know. Also, that's... my by the way, mopeds get better MPG than fat chicks. <laughs> I was watching the Dodger game recently. This is true. I was watching the Dodger game, and uh, the backup infielder Chin Lung Hu came up to the plate, and he got a single in the tenth inning against the Colorado Rockies. Right and I'm watching the game, and I'm waiting for Vin Scully. It's like, come on, say it. Say it. <laughs> say it. And he never said it. Uh, you would have said it, right? I would have said it. Well, I, I don't, I don't want to get in trouble for this, but I used to. What uh, would you have said? In, in a legal profession. You don't know what I'm we talking had, about, do you? Uh, yeah. I, I had a client when I was working. In he a doesn't legal know what I said. And you talk to New Yorkers about why New York is better. Hey, they got better pizza there. You guys ain't got no good pizza here. The, the, the morons. This is this is the best thing they can say about their city. Well, not only that, but the chicks there. I mean, that accent is just... It's like you're talking to a dude, like a tough dude. Like, hey, uh, you know, come on come on over here. What's, what's your name? What's your number? I'll date a woman for, for like two months before she starts going, oh, well... You know, either we you know, become exclusive or out, and it's like, oh, so all right, bye, good knowing you, bye. Simple. They cry, they moan, they you know, whatever, but it doesn't, it doesn't faze me. I don't. That's just the way it works. You know what I mean? I do. I'm a proud righteous listener to the fullest. She should have done two things. She should have closed her legs and closed her mouth. Cause God, I mean, okay, people saying, oh, the parents should have been more involved. What are the guy ask their kid? Hey, are you pregnant? You know, it's her fault she was fat so the parents didn't even notice. I got the best comeback when a girl asks you to go to a friend's wedding. You look at her right in the right in the eye, you say, Honey, I'd love to, but that's the day I'm scheduled to remove my liver with a warm spoon while chewing on tin foil. <laughs> You know what? My wife wants me to go to this wedding, correct? Yeah. You know, she forced me. You know, she's like, she got me. But I said, you know what? This is my plan. The minute the priest says, does anybody object? I'm going to stand up. I'm going to have a pause. And I'm going to stand up and say, I object to this wedding because he is ruining his life. Because of Tom Lighton said, so do not get married to this bitch. <laughs> I'm just curious where you guys got the, like, sample of We gave from. it out. I, I didn't do the survey. What do you think I did the survey myself? No, uh, I can tell you. you don't Where did know. I get the sample? We're not scientists. We are a radio program. We don't. We're not anthropologists. We do not go out to the field and do research. It sounds like an anthro. Uh, uh... Yes, but the kind of work I do is usually bubbling water around me when I'm doing my research. People wonder oh, why yeah. I say turn oh, the, radio the radio off. Up? Dean tells, tells them to turn the radio over and over. This is why Dean tells them to turn the radio off. I hate when it does that. Over and over. Yeah, yeah, over. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. that and when it starts second. repeating over and over and over. <laughs> this is the worst. You don't believe that for a then it starts to confuse people. I'm confused. It confuses me. You're cracking yourself up now. It confuses the listener. By the way, I do not date strippers. And you guys get confused. If you listen to the show, you know I would never date a stripper. The worst thing that could happen. Well, then, is that it starts repeating the, like this? The, the hot chick leaves the house, that. and, and, and she and she's calling. Like so when the screener tells you to turn the radio off, that's why. Matt, what did you want to say here? Oh, that was I died laughing. I was on the floor laughing so hard, and coffee coffee burns so bad when it comes out of your nose. <laughs> From Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. B-I-T-C-H. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. 
This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right wing wacker or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Right down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5 800 TOM. 1 800 5 800 866. Wide open telephones on this Friday on the Tom Likas show. Anything goes here, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It can be anything we discussed on the air this week. What a week we had, too. We had the Yankee fan who murdered the Red Sox fan. (laughs) Oh, what a great story that was. Didn't hear a lot of New Yorkers calling in to defend that. Or even defend New York when that happened. Mm Mm-hmm. We had the uh, story about the L.A. man who uh, won our Pussy of the Month award. He won the right to uh, get married and use his wife's last name instead of his wife using his last name. Meow. We had a conversation about those poor suckers, those saps, those maroons who have been trying to unload their gas-guzzling SUVs. And guess what? Nobody wants them. People want to buy smaller vehicles. they got to take it in the shorts. they got to take a loss to unload their SUVs and their trucks. They're rushing to the dealers to trade them in. Nobody wants them. The dealers are offering less than Kelly Blue Book for these vehicles. And these people are whining now to the news media. Wah, wah, wah. (laughs) We talked about that lovely 17-year-old from Long Beach who I didn't, she was so fat, her parents couldn't tell she was pregnant. In fact, they had no idea she was pregnant until after. She took a shower, felt contractions, delivered the baby to herself in the shower. Then with the placenta still attached, she uh, wrapped herself in a coat and took the baby and the placenta over four blocks. She walked by foot to the hospital where uh, the whole uh, ordeal was completed. The photo of her is still on our MySpace page, myspace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S. Get a look at her. Hoo-wee. Oh, yeah. Uh, I uh, reminded you guys in wedding season, do not go to weddings. Do not let her drag you to a wedding. If you're going to go, go stag. Do not go with a chick to a wedding. Don't do it. If you're uh, in a relationship, if you're dating somebody, that that's the worst date in the world. The only reason for a man to go to a wedding is to pick up chicks. If you can't pick up chicks at a wedding because you're with a chick, there's no point in you going. Just say no to that. That's what I do. I say no. I have not been to a wedding in 10 years. 10 years. Yes, we talked about, uh, once again, we talked about chicks and bad boys. <laughs> That ongoing story about why chicks love bad boys. Uh, we had some conversation about the NBA playoffs here in L.A. It's all about the Lakers. Uh, the people are obsessed, obsessed, obsessed. We talked about that. Any of this we can talk about. Also, anything we did not talk about this week, and this just in, and I'm not making this up. We've referred to it on the air before. A radio talk show host who, by the way, used to slam me on the air because of the content of my show. Well, the content of my show is nothing like the content of his computer. While he was uh, busy attacking me on the air, apparently he was uh, stowing images of child pornography on his computer. And not only that, going into chat rooms and he was sending it to other people and he has now admitted to it. 
I guess he got a plea deal. So he's only sentenced to five years in prison. Bernie Ward, formerly of KGO Radio at San Francisco, five years in prison. By the way, go to the smoking gun, read the transcripts of his little chats online about watching his son having sex with uh, other boys or what. I mean, just the sickest stuff you can possibly imagine. So this guy is on the radio. He's a big, uh, you know, liberal talk show host, a big Democratic supporter. And, uh, you know, taking sh- totally politically correct on the air, taking shots of people like me for being slime balls. And, and meanwhile, who's a bigger slime ball? This is the thing. This is why you have to look out for the people who call other people slime balls. For the people who criticize other people's morality or their motives. Because while they're busy criticizing what you're doing, you can only imagine what they're doing. And we always find out in the end, right, Bernie? Bernie will be uh, remanded to the prison at some point in the next few months. In the meantime, he's wearing an ankle bracelet. And all he can do is uh, take care of his children. Hey, that's great, right? And uh, go to church. How ironic. Bernie Ward. <laughs> Who's a slime ball now, Bernie? See in prison. The only thing they hate more than a tattletale in prison is a child raper or somebody who has photos of child rape and goes to prison for such a lame reason. Oh, baby, you're going to be having a good time in prison, Bernie. (laughs) When Bernie, by the way, I met Bernie Ward 16 years ago at the Republican convention at the Astrodome in Houston. And uh, Bernie had nothing bad to say to me back then, but uh, later on when my show was on at San Francisco... And Bernie was out in San Francisco. Bernie started taking shots at me on the air. I don't know why, but he did. Good luck to you, Bernie. Who's a slime ball now, you moron? (laughs) What a slime. Also, by the way, as we uh, talk to you at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom, we can talk about our Monday Cinco de Mayo broadcast. Were you there? Uh, do you have any stories to tell? Anybody who was there knows I wasn't exaggerating. Even the guys in the studio did not know what had happened until later, when we had uh, two strippers getting into a fight. They were from rival strip clubs, literally hair pulling, punching kind of fight. And uh, the crowd surged, and it was uh, pretty wild stuff. It was one of the wildest parties we ever had. And uh, that could have been you. You could have been there, you moron. Where were you? So all you have to do is call us here toll-free at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. Wide open telephones on this Friday on the Tom Likas Show. Your calls are coming up next. Tom, 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 Tom. Like this. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. If I'm blessed enough to meet my soulmate, why would I go and blow it with marriage? It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. Wide open telephones. 1 800 5 800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Tina of the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. This is Tina. I know. I just said that. Oh, I'm sorry. I just wanted to comment um, on what you just said about the gentleman in San Francisco. People like that, they should be put in for the rest of their lives in jail. I think what has made you so so successful in the last 20 years since you've been in the radio business is that you stay true to your views and you don't take dirt from anybody. Well, no, no, but it goes a step further. Um, when I've been a creep, I tell you about it. Exactly. I tell you all the ways I've been a creep. I tell you I cheated on my, my uh, particular wives or girlfriends. I tell you what drugs I've done. I tell you how I uh, lied. I told uh, the story on the air about how when I was... Uh, 
going to my first big radio job away from home. I needed money, and I, to get the money, I called up an old girlfriend who was anxious to see me, and <laughs> I, I slept with her, and then she gave me 150 bucks in a paper bag. So essentially, I was a gigolo. I mean, I, I believe me, I've left no stone unturned trying to tell you all the dirt about myself. I, I, so w w the problem is when people try to portray themselves as perfect people, it doesn't matter if they're conservatives like that Italian congressman from Staten Island in New York who, uh, uh, you know, he's a Republican conservative who has an illegitimate daughter living in Maryland. He's been boning some chick out in the suburbs of Washington, D.C. while he's busy making laws against gay marriage and the, the voting for the Sanctity of Marriage Act and stuff like that. He's busy boning somebody on the side, you know, wife and three kids in Staten Island. You have to look out for the people who lecture about morality. Exactly. They're the trouble, okay? I tell you, I'm not a perfect person. I've done bad things. I've done things to people that some people would be ashamed of. But better to tell you here than to have you find out later. Hey, I don't agree with a lot of the views that you have. I'm married. I have four kids. Been married the last 18 years. But like I said, you are honest, and I find you very entertaining. Please do not change. Please keep it up. I hope you last another 20, 30 years on the radio. Thank you for that. Can you take me out with... You pick something to take me out with. Well, when I pick something, I pick the old fave. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. I think from now on we're going to call him Bernie Ward of the State. Which is what he will now be for the next five years. <laughs> Oh, baby. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here's Alan on the Tom Likas Show. Wide open telephones on this Friday. Hello. Alan? Kudos to you, man, for telling New Yorkers and folks from the East Coast like it is. Here. Not out here, but here. Right. Exactly. <laughs> and another thing, too. The other day when you did the, uh, the guy uh, who didn't turn his radio down... I, I, I was laughing my ass off. I, I had to pull over. I was laughing so hard. Is there a way you can set that up where you can take people out that style and call it whatever? I think we actually are working on that. All right. Did you cool. hear we played a clip of it at the beginning of the hour? Yeah, I heard that. Yeah. <laughs> Tom, you're the man. But for now, can you take me out vir with the virtual Tom Likas? Oh, absolutely. Virtual Tom Likas. That's the electronic version of me. Thanks, Tom. All right. Here you go, Alan. Daddy equals 14. 1-800-5800-TOM. <laughs> That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, Justin on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Justin. Hi, Tom. Father, yeah. how you doing? Okay, son. Um, I'm just calling in about um, <clears throat> what you were talking about earlier this week of uh, gas prices and people with these... Uh, huge trucks and SUVs that want some kind of incentive or something to help them pay for gas. I drive a big avalanche, some big chrome rims on it, and, you know, it, eats, it sucks up gas, but I bought something I could afford. I can afford the gas. I don't see why these people can't afford the gas, and then they want help for it. it well, why should we be subsidizing the morons who have fuel-inefficient vehicles? Yeah, if you can't afford gas, that's your own fault. It's not our fault. Yeah, they need to live within their means. I mean, I can afford the gas. I can afford to spend 100 bucks, you know, every week and a half. And I'm happy because I'm in a comfortable, nice ride, and I love it. Yeah. I'm going to spend, by the way, I drive a V8 Lexus, and I'm going to spend uh, 87 or 88 bucks filling my tank so I can drive up uh, uh, to my home up in Santa Barbara County this weekend. But you know why I'm going to do it? Because I can't. Because I don't need any subsidies. I, you don't have to suspend the gas tax. I'm happy to pay it. Yep. I mean, I'm college educated. I have a good job, and uh, I can live within my means and do what I want. Um, I don't see why we need to help someone else out because they can't do the same. That's right. Uh, well, I, I, I totally agree with you. I don't think we should ever subsidize people because of their own stupid decisions. And that amen. includes mortgages and any other stupid decisions people make financially. Amen. I, I fully understand. I don't understand why people aren't, why people just can't get it. There, so pretty, there is risk involved to every decision you make, and there are responsibilities 
And uh, you need to live up to your responsibilities and live with the consequences. Exactly, exactly. Well, I appreciate you taking me uh, taking my call. Could you take me out with a uh, bong hit followed by a thank you, Jesus? I certainly can. Thank you, Jesus. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, Reggie on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Tom. Hello, Reggie. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Good, good. Happy Friday. And the same to you. Thank you very much. Hey, I have to say something. I'm a black I'm a black man. I have to say something to other black guys as well while they're listening. Um, you got to stop talking to fat chicks. Because when I'm at the club trying to enjoy myself, I got fat chicks coming at me. Because thinking that that's what we all want. I'm 6'1", 215 pounds. About 7% body fat, make over 150000 a year, look pretty decent, got enough money to do this and that. Some gross thing will think just because I'm black, I'm going to be on that. You know, I, I, you make an interesting point here, and I'm going to say so. You, you're always getting into to, to thin ice when you start talking about these subjects, but I know you're going to understand that what I'm saying is completely true and not in any way based on racism. It's just, just a fact. You know, I always say on this program, fat chicks are for poor guys. Sure. And and as you know, uh, the average salary of an African American is lower than the average salary of a number of other groups. Uh, and, I would agree. And so the reason you see so many black guys hitting on fatties, white or black, is because that's all they can afford. Easy picking. Right. But the thing Easy. is, Easy it's become a stereotype that black guys love fat chicks. It's when, not true. The reality is, Brian Gumble's not with a fat chick. Michael Jordan's not with fat chicks. Kobe yeah. Bryant's not with a fat chick. Uh, <laughs> guys who can afford uh, hot, thin chicks, no matter what color the guy is, that's what they want. Absolutely. And if, it were, if you were in Alabama or someplace like that, you'd see it more prevalent that poor white guys are with fat chicks. That's exactly just right. What being in the city, in the suburbs of the city and around L.A., predominantly minorities, and you see the poor minorities with the fat chicks. That is exactly right. It runs across the board, black or white. But me being in L.A., i got to tell the black dudes, I know that chickens are slim, maybe times are hard for you, but you got to stop hitting on these chicks because they think that it's cool to hit on me, and it grosses me the hell out. Yeah. Well, that's why we have to let people know that this is a stereotype. Black guys are not into fat chicks. Poor guys are into fat chicks. You hang out in Hollywood, you see a successful black guy, he's with the hottest chicks there. Of Hawaii, course he is. Successful, usually taller, extremely charismatic, tall, dark, and handsome. Well, I tell, I tell people all the, the time, guys. look at any rich black guy on television. Any. Jay-Z is not with Moms Mabley, okay? No. <laughs> disgusting. That, that's, I mean, this is the thing. Successful black men like hot, thin chicks. Successful men. Just yeah, like any successful men. But uh, the point is, I'm trying to smash this stereotype. Because yeah. the real truth is, no matter what color a man is, yeah. uh, fat chicks are for poor guys. If, if I brought some disgusting chick around my friends and co-workers, I'd be a laughing stock. It just it wouldn't happen. What would they do to your reputation uh, in business as well? Forget about it. And I work in the fitness industry from time to time. I work with nutritional supplements, physical uh -huh. therapy. If I were to... Jesus, I look like I work out consistently. What makes some chick that's a blob think that I'm going to be interested in someone that doesn't work out? That's exactly right. So we need to educate people uh, that it's it's poor guys who <laughs> like fat is. chicks. It is not black guys or any other race of guys. It has to do with if you can't afford a thin chick, then you hit on the fat chicks. Absolutely. And fat chicks need to understand it, too. Maybe they'll lose some weight. You've heard about that club bounce we've talked about on the air down in Long oh, Beach, man. right? Yeah, I've heard about that place. I live in Beaumont Shores. and uh, Well, you heard, you heard they had some shootings in the parking lot there a few weeks ago. I can only imagine. That's that's my <laughs> whale. That's not your whale. <laughs> yeah, the chicks now, were so hot, guys are losing their minds shooting at each other. <laughs> yeah, now, how many, how many, now, uh, we do understand that uh, there's a number of black men who go to this place. How many of them make over 50000 a year? Uh, I wouldn't have a clue. I've never been there. No, no. Just, to, just, just guessing. Uh, uh, ba geez, based on no, based on other <laughs> successful black men, you know, how many of the black men at Club Bounce make over fifty thousand a year? Oh man, I don't even want to say it, dude. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> now, hang on a second, Reggie. Let me get James in here. James, what did you want to say to Reggie? Hey, uh, Tom's third time caller, long time listener. There's got to be a small exception to that rule about African American men and the salary that they have is all that they can get because you got to remember that the like is one on one really does not apply too much to African American men. I mean, we got the most game out of anybody, uh, money or not. Why wouldn't like? Oh, so, uh, with these black dudes with these fat white chicks, I think that's what they like, man. I, I go in people's houses every day in Portland, freaking Oregon. These fat, ugly of all races and all creeds, they're all fat and ugly, and I see every race of man with them. I don't particularly see a large amount of African-American men with fat white women, maybe at the club, but okay, just well, on the street. What these guys generally for? Will these guys generally make less income? These guys that you've seen with the fat women? What would you say? Will the guys that you generally see with these fat women, are they generally on the lower scale of income? I wouldn't say that necessarily. No, I would uh, not. Would you say I mean, generally? Unless- Unless they have low income driving Cadillacs with 24 inch rims, which I mean, you know, uh, you know, we got a problem with that. Hey, hey, every. Oh, I mean, where they live? Okay, anyone, anyone can drive a Cadillac with big rims, but where do you live? How much are you paying for your mortgage? If your mortgage is 1,200 bucks a month and your car payment is 700 bucks a month, obviously you're an idiot anyway, and you're spending your money in the wrong circuit. So. Well, that's exactly right. I agree with you. That's that's a poor mentality. So I'm not. I'm talking black. I'm talking black guys about this. Right. I cannot say that uh, generally a lot or most African-American men, because of their income, choose to date fight uh, fat, ugly white women because that's all that they can afford. Because I see poor, poor than poor, broke black men with uh, exceptionally looking women of all colors. Because they and, got game. Uh, they got that's game. right. So I, that's what I'm saying. That's my whole point. Okay, okay, look, are, you, are you saying that poor black guys do not generally – do not? I'm not saying poor black – are you saying you don't see a – Dominant amount of poor black guys with fat chicks when you're hanging out. Are you saying that that doesn't happen in your genre or wherever you're I'm hanging out? I'm not saying, I, of course, that happens. So are you saying of that? Of course it happens. I'm saying that I see, uh, I see men, uh, African-American men, who make a decent amount of money who are not poor with fat white women or with fat, oh. ugly women, period. And I well, see men who, uh, I see poor, uh, broke men living in the projects with fine women. And I go in these people's houses every day, so that's what I see. And this is Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat. Yeah, I'm from I'm from the projects myself. I'm a hustler, and I've grown and established myself in business and make what I make now because of my ability for me having game. I'm not saying that people from the projects, just because they're poor, don't have any game, because they obviously do. So they have to get their money the same way that we do, and they have to be creative about it. I'm saying they probably have more game than the average Joe. That's right. That's what I'm saying, saying too. I agree with every other point, man. I'm just saying I cannot. I, I have to say there's a small exception to the rule with uh, the fat, white, whatever, ugly women and African American men. That's all that they can afford. For some reason, I think they like that, man. You know, whatever. Because I don't see it up here, and this is the this is the place to see it right here. And where are you at? Portland, freaking Oregon. Portland, Oregon. Man, I feel yeah. sorry for you. I hang out in uh, Redmond a lot in Bend, and I get to Portland a lot, too, because I'm all up and down the West Coast. And uh, there are some successful black guys out there with some pretty hot chicks. And then you do have some trash with some trash. That's right. Now, I'm not, I'm not hey. saying any race is predominantly looking for fat chicks. I agree. I'm just saying that hey. the, the poor the person is, you have to stick with your option. Water seeks its own right. level. Hey, Tom, will you destroy my brain cells, please, with a bong hit? (laughs) Here you go, boys. Tom, Tom, Tom. Like this. Like this. 1-800-5800-TOM. What do you have against Tom? Nothing. My manhood, usually. It's the Tom Likes Show. The Tom Likas Show. 1 800 5 800 Tom. Wide open telephones on the Tom Likas Show. Surge he is calling from Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? I, I missed the beginning of the program, but I, I heard you talk about uh, Bernie Ward. 
he, he's a, Bernie uh, Ward of the state, yes. And huh? He, he has a he had a program in uh, Sunday morning. Yes. It was called God Talk. Yeah. He used to God. talk about God for a few hours. Yes. And he used to be a Catholic priest. Uh, yes, I know. And isn't that appropriate? <laughs> but have, have you ever seen Tell, it, telling all the boys to get on their knees? I think that's fantastic. <laughs> you ever see the picture of the guy? Oh, I have. He he probably weighs. I don't know, probably close to what an elephant weighs, a full-grown <laughs> elephant. <laughs> his, his head is probably the size of a, of a full-grown, uh, I don't know, 100-pound pumpkin. Yep, 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 no doubt about it. Did, did you read the transcripts, by the way, of his uh, chats online? No, no, he said he was writing a book. Yeah, yeah, right. Oh, oh yeah, well, he was, yeah, well, I'll tell you what, he could write a book. You could write a great book uh, with the transcripts of his chats. Go to the Smoking Gun, and you can see what he's talking about. Uh, let's just say he uh, had his eye on his son's crotch, and he uh, was very impressed. Wow. His own son. Take a look. Yeah. They, they don't talk much about him uh, at, at his uh, KTO station anymore. They, I'll they bet just, they don't. <laughs> they only talk about him for like five seconds, and that's it. Yeah. But, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's funny how uh, he got arrested for that. He took five years, right? Yeah. The, this is the guy who was on the air. He used to. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to love Bernie at the prison, I, by the way, once they find out what he's in for. Oh, yeah. This I, is going to be think, great. I think all the conservatives, uh, they go out to San Francisco and not hang around at the Castro District. <laughs> <laughs> I love this stuff, don't you? Hey, hey, Tom, over here in uh, Port, uh, Portland, all this area in Oregon, there's, I haven't seen a hot chick yet. Well, that's why they call it Parkland. Man, it's amazing. I, I, I tried cheating on my wife a couple of times, but I can't find anybody. <laughs> they call it Parkland, or then you have the other name, and it, if it was still called this, uh, I think Heather Mills would live there, like uh, Stumptown. Wow, I don't know. They, 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 uh, I don't Did know you know? Now you are you new in Parkland? Have you only lived there a short time? No, I, I'm a trucker. I, I drive around this area. Oh, I see. Well, originally, uh, when <laughs> when uh, Parkland was originally founded, I don't know if it was a flip of a coin or something, but they had two choices. One was Portland, and the other was Stumptown. And, and Portland won the flip of the coin or whatever, and it, it could have been Stumptown. And if you look around in Portland, uh, there are many businesses called Stumptown Coffee and uh, Stumptown this, Stumptown that. That's why. All the chicks look like stumps. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it's bad. <laughs> Well, Serge, I'm, I'm so glad you checked in. But do go to the Smoking Gun and check out the Bernie Ward content. It's fantastic. Hey, love you, Tom. Well, thank you. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Jeremy on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. It's Jeremy, first, uh, first time caller, long, long time listener. Yes. I uh, DP, DPB'd my girlfriend last night, Tom. Very nice. Yes, sir. How did she react when you dumped her? Oh, I don't know, because uh, we were at the bar having some drinks, and uh, she took my phone, I took hers, and a text came from her ex-boyfriend, something about, I know you're horny. I just dropped the phone and walked right out the restaurant. <laughs> well, now you see why you shouldn't have even had a girlfriend, which we've been yes. telling you for a long time. Yes, sir. But you thought you knew more than I did, right? Uh, no, actually, we've been going out since high school, Tom, before I even started listening to you. Oh, uh, boy. Now you see where that was a bad idea, right? Yeah. But the but the, the funny thing is, Tom, is she goes to school in Fullerton an hour away, and uh, she didn't have a ride back to her car, and I don't know how she found that one. Uh-huh. And I just well, rocked right out of the restaurant. <laughs> I lo Hopefully you get left her with the bill, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, of course, Tom. <laughs> Anyway, thank you, Jeremy. I appreciate the call. I really do. Here's Jesse on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Doing okay. Yeah, I just wanted to comment about this uh, Nikum poop that called you yesterday about Kobe Bryant. Yes. How he's not a streaky player. Yes. And I, I think he is because the last couple of years he's been averaging 30-plus a game or 50-plus. This guy's well, not, no, no, he has not been averaging. Kobe's not been averaging 50-plus a game. Nobody has ever averaged 50-plus a game in the NBA, not even Will Chamberlain. Well, he, he's done it a 
A couple of times. No, no. Well, scoring of scoring times. 50 plus in a game a couple of times doesn't mean you're averaging 50 points a game. Yeah. Well, just to average that. 50 points a game, you have to have 50 points most of the time. Yeah, most of the time. But he's up there right now. With, uh, he, he compared him to Magic and uh, Jordan, I think. But in my eyes, I think Kobe's the best right now. Well, the best there ever was. Well, he's certainly the best right now, and uh, winning the MVP, I think, is an indicator of that. Uh, but, uh, of course, uh, you know, we could sit here all day and argue whether Michael Jordan was better. The thing is, it depends on how you rate good, better, and best. I do yeah. think that Michael Jordan was a better ambassador for the NBA than Kobe Bryant is. Yeah. Uh, and people liked Michael Jordan across the country more than they liked Kobe across the country. Uh, having said that, here in L.A., everybody's in love with Kobe, no matter what he's done. Yeah. <laughs> No matter what scandals he's in. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. And no matter what he said about uh, Dr. Boss, no matter what he said about Andrew Bynum, no matter what he said about Jason Kidd, no matter what he said about anybody, Mitch Kupchak. Yeah, well, I, I can see where he's coming from. That was a lot of frustration. The best player on the team and only one star. Well, then there's other. <laughs> I wouldn't say that uh, Pau Gasol is not a star at this point. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, he's a star too. But I mean, like before when he was calling Jerry Buss the idiot and all these other guys, Andrew right. Bynum. All right, but Andrew Bynum was 20 years old. I mean, what yeah. what do you expect from Andrew Bynum at 20? Michael yeah, Jordan at 20 wasn't as good as Michael Jordan at 25. Yeah, that's true. Do you remember Michael Jordan's first couple of years playing for the Bulls? Yeah. He stunk. <laughs> yeah. He stunk. He had to learn how to play in the NBA. And once he did, he was incredible. Yeah. And, it, and as we saw this season with Andrew Bynum, uh, you know, you can't go to a 20 year old kid and then just start to trashing him like that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But uh, have you seen Kobe? In now, the, uh, now, if Kobe said that Kwame Brown stunk, I'm right there with him. Yeah. <laughs> He's horrible. But he, but he didn't say that. Yeah, that's true. Because well, look how big Kwame Brown is. <laughs> well, you didn't know they could pilot that high, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm hmm. But uh, I, I think he's a streaky player because that guy yesterday was saying he's not really a streaky player. But if, you, if you've seen him the last couple of years, he could explode at any well, time. Well, no, I mean, Kobe Bryant, when he wants to be, is yeah. the best clutch player I've ever seen. Yep. He, he can knock down any shot in any situation uh, when he wants to do it. But as you've seen, there are sometimes he does not want to do it. And yeah. uh, you may recall in a playoff series against the Phoenix Suns where Kobe just simply quit. So this season, after all the screaming and yelling and all the drama of last summer, uh, once uh, Kobe realized that all the players around him were not as bad as he thought, uh, he hunkered down and decided he wanted to, uh, you know, show up and put in a full day's work every day. Yeah. And he wanted to be great every day. And he was. And the, there's no no doubt about it. This season he was absolutely spectacular in every way. Yeah. Uh, but he's a, uh, he's a complex individual who is uh, not as easily understood as Michael Jordan or Will Chamberlain or guys like that. Yeah. But Magic Johnson, what do you think? Magic Johnson was also not a complex individual. I mean, yeah. you can say a lot of things about Magic. He's one of the most likable people in the world. Complex yeah. is not a word I would use to describe it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In any way. You pretty much know what you're getting with Magic. Hey, thanks a lot for the call. I appreciate it. Hey, our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. Our website, blowmeuptom.com, streams our show live. Our MySpace page, myspace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S. The Tom Likas Show.